That's not from the pivot. Look. So, as you can quite obviously see, we got a little rain. Finally. Um, I wanted to go up in this circle and see how it looked. Graze out heifers. Some water. Uh, I'll take my foot over there through, but the gate over there is completely flooded. And I'll just walk. So, that stuff's looking good. It's short, but I hope I hope it makes up for it and being a little bit thicker. Uh, to answer your questions, we have received. I say last week, uh, last couple days, of last week we probably had about half an inch total here. And, you know, on, through a couple rains. It, and it, so it, it really kind of greened the grass up. And last night, today is Wednesday. Uh, like the 23rd or something like that. Last night I was cutting hay. And it... They got an inch of rain in Clayton. And the gauge here had three inches and it had a giant crack in it. And they had two inches over there. There's four and a half inches you know, several miles that way. And we, I mean, we, we probably, we got ponds with water in them. We got water standing out here. So I'm gonna say we got Let's say we just got three inches on the average. Well, this storm, actually it's the one that's already passed us, rolled through. It dropped another half inch of rain. So our, uh, our prayers have definitely not gone unheard. So this is my graze out. And they're really, they're working on it. They're working on it. That water and that, that foot track there I mean she's she's wet out here so a lot of this will flush back up I'm hoping I'm hoping I don't know that it will for sure but I'm hoping so there's a bunch of cattle out here there's about 200 head on 120 acres and so yeah I mean it's <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty happy we were we were in pretty rough shape we were in really bad shape. So this, hopefully this will get us into June, or uh, maybe to about the 4th of July. This will help us out, get to about that far. And we can grow good grass in the pastures for the cows. Um, I currently have 500 acres of hay on the ground. Um, I'm supposed to cut this, but I've got me and another guy are going to cut 500 acres of alfalfa Saturday and Sunday. May I start, um, might start Friday afternoon. But I've got 500 acres of wheat on the ground. And then I'm going to start cutting for silage wheat Monday in Dalhart. So I'm going to be cutting at days and baling at night. So you can see our... Here's our wheat. This is Tam 111 wheat. Uh, and this is our, our 348 triticale, which is slick trick. That's what it is. So we, we planted a mix of it. And they thought it would be better for grazing. So we just go that route. A lot of this stuff's just getting knocked over. But, I'm actually quite impressed. There's still quite a bit of feed out here. There's a lot of feed up on, on that hill-ish, if you can call it a hill. Um, I don't want to go too far over there, because 
there's my little lake that I have out in this circle. I actually have several lakes out in this circle. But that when that one fills, you know we got a big rain. When you get that lake, you know you got a big rain. So that's that's how we we knew that that three inches wasn't a lie. But uh to kind of recap on this feed here, uh if it flushes up and actually our little stuff kind of grows, I mean we would be that'd be fantastic for us because then we get a little more growth and we could probably I'd say in about a you know here after a little bit we could pull some of these cattle off this circle and probably sell about half of them I'll leave the other ones out here um, time wise it's gonna become an issue because I'm gonna be you know he kind of at some point this is one one is gonna want to go to seed so it's gonna dry out at some point uh, and that is when I think we'll, we're gonna start losing our gain I've had this stuff this triticale stay green till uh oh mid-june and not dry out so i'm kind of hoping that's the case you can see a couple early maturing plants in here um this is what i'm afraid of is this stuff's gonna is gonna mature before before the cattle are ready to go um that's what I'm, I'm kind of worried about, but I guess there's nothing I can really do about it. To be honest with you, they're gonna they're gonna do whatever they're gonna do. But so I'll uh, I'll be gone the third week, or about the second and a half week of June. I'll be gone, and probably about right when these cattle need to ship. So that's probably when when they're gonna need to go is that time our feeder market's terrible so that's about right about about when they uh about when they need to go it's gonna probably be even worse so it's just part of owning them i actually got some hedges on these cattle so i uh i hope it covers for anything they lack and i hope they just i hope they get this graze enough and then gain enough weight off of it that you know they're gonna weigh heavy but honestly I don't know it's this is all new to me I have never grazed out wheat so it's new to me but we got lots of clover out here uh, that that helps too with the protein you can still see we got old sod in here that needs to be broke down, but we're gonna subsoil it again this year, and and we'll just go from there. But honestly, I think the way this is looking, I could probably pull quite a few cattle out of here and and be okay. Um, I'm I'm kind of wondering if I couldn't put calves back in here uh, even if it started to dry up I know I could put calves back here when it dried up I've seen people do it might have to feed them some liquid feed but I know it can be done and just let them eat the remnants because there's this is too thin to even cut I mean you can't that'd be pointless to even try to cut this so and I don't I don't want to leave it standing no point in that, you know, I'll just, I had cows in here last year, after I cut and baled it, I had a bunch, uh, I had some come back up, and I put some cows in here, and they did, you know, it didn't look like there was hardly any feed out here, <coughs> but there must have been enough protein in it, they did excellent, I mean, they really did phenomenal on it, so... I guess I could do that too, but it's, it's good just to see some, some moisture. 
that makes it very nice. Some of these got some pretty good seed heads on them, and they weren't watered that much. Uh, because uh, I haven't watered this stuff in well over a month. I stopped watering it, and I just diverted everything to my hay circles, because we were so dry, I couldn't keep ahead of the heat at all. But, live and you learn, I guess. I think there's quite a bit of feed out here still. I really do. I can always uh, supplement with silage and they'll do good on that. But as much as much as that's left, I mean, I, another week will be into June. So, I mean, really, it, we make it to June. We'll see how much le is left, and we'll kind of just go from there, because I, I truly don't know uh, when to pull them. I don't know what the cattle are gaining. I, I figured them at two pounds a day, but, you know, maybe they're gaining three. On this good green feed, they might be gaining three. I have still have a lot of smaller cattle in here. But I got a lot of big cattle I could sort out and send. But, like I got a couple little dinks in here and and stuff like that. But you know, that's just part of. It. There's some big calves right there. Yeah, those ones are kind of kind of tubby. So. I wish I was on my four wheeler, we'd just run around, but I didn't want to go through the gate. These are just kind of a little handful of calves right there. That blue tag heifer right there is a chronic heifer. She looks great now. 59 was a chronic. Um, but they're turning around. They really are. He was just a little oddball that I had. Now he's big, so. This might actually turn out to be a pretty good deal for for us, but let's have to see how it goes. I'm uh, going to go check some more feed and go check some calves that I just got in yesterday and make sure they're doing okay and catch you all on the next one.